So our next uh, panel discussion is going to be innovation on digital textile platform. And I'm going to be the moderator for this panel. And uh, yes, for all of you already know me, I'm the founder and CEO of Silicon Valley Innovation Channel, Dating TV. So next, I'm gonna invite our speakers to join us. Uh, Wayne Fan, uh, he, who is a co-founder of Frontier, has 10 years of experience in fashion. And also I'm going to invite another speaker is Joshua uh, Bernstein. And Bernstein is also uh, the fashion designer, well-recognized -re fashion designer in San Francisco. Before we start, I'm gonna have you guys to introduce yourself. Uh, each can have two minutes to introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, years ago, I was uh, working for a museum marketing uh, to launch a museum on Market Street. And I was observing the beautiful paintings of Asian painting, Chinese painting. I had to go pretty deep into understanding Asian uh, ink brush uh, classical painting. And uh, after a while, I realized I wanted to see that moving and animated. And I met uh, designer Monique Zong, and we teamed up to create fashion with a classical Asian ink brush. My background is mostly um, the arts music uh, and also recently um, full stack development and web uh, engineering. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you so much. Yes, and uh, I especially I want to thank to my friend Monique Zhang. And Monique is a well respected Asian American fashion designer in San Francisco, and he, she is a partner of uh, Joshua. So um, Monique recommended Joshua here. Thank you, Joshua, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, in, I know that for the fashion, there are so many, uh, you know, textiles. So what is the current situation and challenges in the fashion uh, and obstacle industry in the U.S. during the pandemic? We, uh, Joshua, can you share with us? During the pandemic, um, I think I can just say that overall, in terms of digital textile, the, the main challenge would be um, that it becomes two-dimensional. Um, and also it can lose some of that cultural uh, depth of artistry that, and also learning that it takes to develop some of those skills. Uh, let's say that if, uh, if it's embroidery and then it's uh, photographed and then it's also then printed, it can become pixelated or not enough detail so it, it can feel two dimensional. Uh, in terms of COVID, I would say that uh, I, think, I think the limitation is really um, that we're having to do everything digitally rather than meet up with people that we normally might want to see, you know, the quality and touch it. Um, uh, but, you know, we can send things over, ship things overseas. So that's not really a huge limitation, but maybe the factories for production are not, you know, they're shut down or it's, it's a lot harder to get um, the kind of numbers you want. And also seeing your customers is uh, very difficult. Uh, they, they don't necessarily want to see you, but they would like to ship items. But then again, they won't see the depth of it just by the, looking on the computer. They need to actually touch it. And I think when you let someone touch the fabric and they can really feel the difference, they're more, they will tend to be more uh, willing to purchase it. Mm. Well, uh, so I know that uh, you and uh, Monique are, you know, really, you know, specialized in the, the dress, the, the dress. So uh, what, how do you do that? Normally you will need to create a prototype, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, you mean in how do we specialize in the dress, you mean? And, and what are we doing now about that? Uh, well, again, it's the customers that would normally see us at a show because we're we're both fashion producers. We'll, we'll actually create the clothes and then and and also invite other designers, and then we'll have people to act, actually see the clothing, and then be able to touch it. And it's easier for them at that point. And then maybe we invite them from there to be able to come to the studio. Now that's not happening at all during COVID. So we had to redesign ourselves and make uh, masks. And now that a lot of people are appreciating this mask that uh, Monique has designed. Um, I can paint on the mask. She can uh, create 
the mask out of very special fabrics. For example, the Shibori. Uh, there's a beautiful mask here. Let me show you. It's a Shibori fabric. Oh, very beautiful. Wow. Made into a mask. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be in multiple layers. Wow. Some of it is uh, from a kimono, for example. That's very creative. Yeah, so we work together to um, kind of adjust ourselves in the fashion scene to to what people might actually be more open to. And then they come and they, they see it in the window and they say, oh, we want to try that, we want that. And we have people buying that, that's, that's successful. Yeah, it seems uh, like- the... of... go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, I was gonna, okay. In terms of yes. making uh, an outfit, okay, this is a digital print. Wow, is that your painting? No, actually this one is the digital and it, you can see that it's a little bit more pixelated. My painting, mm -hmm. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it looks like your, your painting. Yeah, it's uh, similar in some way. This is that, um, this is the painting. Beautiful. Well, these are translucent uh, organza and, you're, and these are the actual original, not, not uh, printed on through a uh, printer. I mean, printing okay. quality has gotten very good now, um, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, in terms of Epson or printed dots, you're able to get even smaller micro dots. So the quality is, is getting better. Uh, you can see the brush, but in terms of something like this, you couldn't reproduce it very well. It would be very difficult. I don't know if you can see very well, but we can put up other images later. Yes. So this so is I, I, Yes. Oh, great. Wei is here, right? Yeah, I'm here. Wei is here, right? Great, great. Uh, welcome, Wei. No problem. Yeah, finally you're here. Thank you for getting on. So Wei, no, can no you problem. give a brief introduction about yourself? Oh, hi, my name is Wei, and then I'm the co-founder of Frontier.Cool. Um, a little bit about what we do as well. Yes, yes. Uh, Frontier is currently the largest digital textile cloud in the world. And our purpose is to help businesses in the fashion apparel industry transform themselves digitally. What that means is move your workflow from offline to online. And then we do that via a vehicle that is a collaboration SaaS. It's a software, it's in the cloud. Um, you can sign in with a set of email and password and then do your work there. Basically, that's what we do. Thank you, Wayne. You see Joshua here. And uh, Joshua is a designer, he's an artist, he's a painter, and also yeah. an engineer. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Joshua just introduced yeah. himself. And, I, I, uh, caught, I caught that part. Yeah. Great, great. Oh, you heard that. Great, great. Wonderful. So, Wayne, you built this textile digital platform, and what, uh, why you started this company, and what issues uh, you find in the industry? You want okay. to, what's the problem you, you want to solve? Um, currently, okay, let me, um, okay. Let's think about in the aerospace and the auto industry, not a single car or an airplane is actually being designed by manually drawing a picture. Maybe it was a hundred years ago, but then if you think about how these uh, machineries are designed, the industry has moved toward an AutoCAD computer-aided design base. And then our thinking is that um, we can, with, a, with digital design, you can achieve a lot more. That's, a, that's, a, that's basically our aim. Now, so the biggest, I would say bottleneck or obstacle in the industry right now lies in the mater material. Because soft material, soft goods material, it's so hard, it's difficult to digitalize. It's costly to digitalize. Therefore, the entire industry, it's, it's the biggest bottleneck where to move from offline process to an online process. That's mm -hmm. where that problem is. And then we exist to solve that basic fundamental problem along with other applications, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes Thank sense. You. So what do you think, uh, Joshua, you heard that Wayne just mentioned about that. And how do you think about, you know, his platform and uh, 
Can you just tell us that uh, sure. you know, yeah. there's a platform like this and what do, what do you want that to be like, look like? Well, there was a time that I had a chance to uh, visit a, um, a designer over at Gap and, um, and they were sending their designs back and forth to China. And uh, it was very hard for them to keep track of their iteration of their design. And then she was in the department where she would create um, one-off design samples before they would start production. And I noticed that it, it was very hard for them to keep track going back and forth just by email. And I think a cloud would be fantastic, especially if it had like software engineers use Git. You know, we use this thing called Git, uh, which uh, keeps track of every time someone makes a change. Um, so uh, in a situation like that, in a corporation, it would be very valuable to have um, a cloud uh, that could keep track of different changes and, um, you know, give, give more customization to the, to the company doing those designs. Uh, for a designer like myself, um, I suppose it could be useful, but I don't really know because I, I don't know the software that well yet to, to judge it. Yeah, it. I think for a larger corporation, it, it's immediately useful if they have multiple sites, you know, all around the world, they need to get to different offices and communicate between offices. It's very helpful to have that. When I was in China, wow. I, I tried in China to do a drop ship. Uh, it's called uh, what's drop that? Shipping. Drop shipping. Drop oh, no, uh, drop box. A uh, drop box. I had to go to some guy's uh, street corner and try to use his computer and try to send a file. And I swear it was impossible. It was impossible because of the China firewall just to send a drop box uh, image back and forth. Okay, and this was just a, a, like a image of some artwork. So, um, so yeah, it'd be hugely valuable, especially for larger corporate companies, to, especially working in Europe, if you want to get your information out to people right away and for warehouses and, um, and production lines. Yeah. Thank can you, I, thank can you. I add a point? Do, do so you mind I add to Joshua's point? Yes, sure. yes, go ahead. I think, I think, uh, Joshua pointed out a, a general phenomenon in the industry right now. That's that's what we we class it, we call it the uh, remote work situation. I think for different industries, uh, every industry is trying to find the solution to kind of work remotely and then work online. Right. Um, we 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 sort of we don't have an end-to-end -end solution, but then currently we do have. We do have something that's better than simply Outlook and Excel sending back and forth. Sure. Um, so, so in our, we support. Um, we, we're a decent solution for for this part because, um, um, right now a lot of for, for instance Levi's they're based in San Francisco. One of our clients they're based yeah. in San Francisco. I mean, right. a lot of their teams they just don't even work in the office anymore. And even sure. though they're factory supply chain sending packages after packages to to their office sometimes if one person there but the rest of the team not there so they still got to do some kind of zoom call or or wiggle around a piece of fabric like you just did in front of a camera which isn't very helpful when you have thousands when you're trying to do a line planning of thousands of materials so so we kind of we really what we do is that we digitize we have a very simple way to digitize materials and then kind of just have the specs, all these associated information regarding a product lying in, in, in an organizable, in a same, in a, on a, in a same setting, so to speak. So, so you can communicate, so, so you can uh, reiterate and do have con calls, everything in a, in a, in a more friendly setting. I and think to, to speak to the remote part, uh, things and then and then I just want to add another point is that uh, this need actually spun out of um, when we started the company initially. That's not it at first. That's not what we wanted to do immediately. But then, since in April, starting April this year, every single trade show was canceled at right. least in the in the foreseeable future. I mean, so far you still don't see any physical trade shows. Yeah. Um, 
let, let's not get into the discussion whether trade shows are good or bad. Some people have different opinions toward that. Um, but then the, the buyer and seller communication interactive aspect is kind of gone. So a lot of the uh, factories, garment factories, supply chain people, they want to push their product in front of their clients. And then we help these uh, these uh, these companies do that digitally. That that's just one one area that we kind of have a solution. To. Oh, that's cool. That would be very helpful. Like you, you guys have uh, lots of in common and talk about in this fashion industry. So you guys better you know connect after this yeah. event and uh, you know have uh, maybe potential collaborations in the future. So. Joshua, it, not talking about the platform like this, so uh, well for you, and what would you hope that this all services would provide to you? And also, <coughs> would you like to become a member or something like that uh, for the mm. designers? So. Mm. Of course, uh, we were just talking about tracking uh, jobs. So, like when you have a job they're working on, you can track it and communication, tracking communication, making notes. Um, but uh, I guess the dream thing there would be. You know, now that we're all doing this uh, Zoom and having to do video, would instead of sending samples halfway around the world, would be able to have really good digital samples and people be able to recognize. For example, the organza I showed you is so different than, uh, and there are different types of organza. Um, it's so different than you know a Dupioni fabric, and then it's very hard to show that. Um, so, but there are standards in the industry where there, many other people will know what you're talking about when you mention it, but there's different color and sheen and everything. And you know, color's the hardest aspect, I think, of design uh, in terms of digital, digital, communicating it over a distance. Because even now, whatever you see on your screen could be brighter than what's actually printed. We do have the Pantone, we do have the CMYK, but once we get to that print, we are always adjusting, oh, it's too dark, oh, it's too light, let's print it again. And we waste a lot of ink, you know, or resolution can be a real problem. So the problems you have with video are also the problems you may have if you're trying to, for example, scan in a painting I did and then go and try to mass produce it in a factory in Laos or wherever it would be done. Um, you know, they, they may not have the, the computer that I have exactly and when they look at it it's darker and then when it gets actually printed on that um on that machine it may not be high enough resolution for me but but even now i wouldn't know that because i don't see the fabric even after they printed a whole roll of it it may be no good you know and a, 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 yeah. a disaster so we so i'd love to see some way to prevent some of those problems uh mm. having basically a way to agree on that. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good point. Like sometimes I bought a clothes online and it come, you know, when, when I received that, it's totally different color. So this really happens. So Wayne, for the, you know, this industry, it, um, like Joshua mentioned, they are, they are like the artists. They really want to reach the highest quality. And how do you prevent uh, this happened? Uh, the color difference and, you know, some of the quality controls and how, how the digital platform can help. Um, I, I want to speak to three areas that Joshua mentioned. I think those are general areas every artist or designer would immediately face. Um, the color issue, first of all, it's no longer an issue. Um, it, the, way, the way we do it is that when you scan, not, not even us, you can, there are other devices in the in industry where you could capture a very good image. So the visual aesthetics of a material, you can actually capture quite well. I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say 100 percent, but then but then uh, I would say 80, 90 percent is pretty well done. So what they do with color is that uh, with the image recognition, what we do is we automatically match you to the Pantone, uh -huh. to a Pantone color. So so you uh -huh. kind of know what it is, and then uh -huh. visually on your computer screen, again every computer is different, so you're going to be seeing it slightly differently. So that's a color issue. So technically, we can match it with the correct Pantone for starters. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, what's important is when you mentioned an organza, uh, the, physical, the physical properties of a material is very important. That's why we're working. We're, we're already collaborating with major 3D software companies to feed mm -hmm. them 
the physical values that's necessary to have an accurate rendering. So designers like yourself can really make the call to really see what it looks like when it's computer design. So what, what is Intel in the, uh, in the fabric digital um, physical property are values such as stretch, such as bend or drape or thickness material. All these things will actually affect the uh, physical appearance of the material. And then that part is actually already uh, achieved as well by a lot of 3D software companies around the world. And then uh, we wanna have a tighter collaboration with these people. And then lastly, I wanna speak to the uh, sample process. Historically, making sample is very unsustainable. I, I, I think you, you know yourself. And uh, so what we, at this stage, what we wanna achieve is that instead of making a, lots of iterations, let's try to get a prototype, maybe 80, 90% right. And then we go ahead and make that, I wouldn't say the final product, but then, so let's just reduce a bunch of the other waste of the uh, um, iterations before that final stage digitally, and then make that last sample. So at the end of the day, uh, when your factory, get, ideally will be able to get all the specs associated with that organza or that particular print, and then be able to make you that one sample that's really closest to, to what your idea is in, instead of a lot of errors happening, color issues through back and forth miscommunication, which actually happens quite a lot with uh, email, with, with Outlook and Excel. So, I mean, I mean that, that's just a human error. It happens, but we, we try to reduce to the minimum. The other aspect that's very important is the depth. And that deals with like the sheen of the material. And it also deals with probably some, well, there's probably some, something there that hasn't been scientifically able to prove. Um, you know, how far the, the ink goes inside the material at a micro level. There is, a, you know, something that's kind of hard to control, maybe able to control, but scientifically, you know, it's a little bit, uh, the, the, Italy has done a well, you know, I would say out of all of the different printing and printing machines that I've come across, they've done really well with it. Um, but I've seen things, well, again, you said it's, it's really under control now. I think it has improved a huge amount. And you see that in the fashion shows in China in the last two years, you see a lot of shows that have uh, beautiful printing. Uh, but again, it's the depth that you miss because when you look at the original painting, not done on fabric, you know, and then transfer it over to fabric, it's really quite different. And um, I would say that, you know, because, well, in the Western painting, the three-dimensional aspect is so huge. In the Eastern painting, it's this, uh, the space itself becomes an element of the painting. And so capturing the space is so critical for that style. And I think that that will be something interesting to improve in, in terms of fabric printing. I still prefer the, the one uh, original artwork done on directly on the fabric, but I think right. we're coming we're getting there and uh, you, it also depends how you use that printed fabric in a, in a, in a design of a dress that, that, that can make it shine or, or uh, be a success or, or not. And then again, there's always the customer who prefers something printed to something that's embroidered and, and it's also price points too. There's a lot of factors there which, which the customer will have different opinions on. But as the designer, you know, you have a lot of opinions yourself about what you think is gonna be amazing and excellent. Um, like I was saying at the beginning, there's a lot of cultural value that could be lost in terms of the depth. Uh, for example, there's a certain style that takes maybe 10 years to learn. Um, I saw it in Taiwan and it's an embroidery style which, which there's fabric put uh, like, um, it makes it puff up. So it's like 3D coming right out of the, off the surface. And so if you made like, um, an apple, it would actually come out a little bit off the skirt and you'd see this apple with all of these leaves around it. And that technique took the person many years to learn. But once you scan that into a computer and it becomes really more two dimensional, do you value what it really took to make it in the first place? That's one of the questions I have. 
Great. Yeah, you guys got uh, uh, one or two minutes. So before we take off, and I would give uh, one minute to each person to give a summarize and uh, what do you want to imagine the future uh, digital textile platform should be? Excuse me, could you rephrase that question? I didn't catch it. Yes, yes. For the, uh, we're talking about the digital textile platform. So what would you imagine the future uh, the platform should be? How that function and what are the, the things that you can imagine? Okay, this. nice. Um, Excuse me, Joshua, did you have a question? I'm sorry. No, I was saying that's really a nice question. Yeah. That's okay. Um, first of all, first of all, it, it's not really the future anymore. A lot of the companies in this space, uh, technology companies in the apparel space, they're, they're, uh, they're doing it. They're doing proof of concept. They're doing it right now. But then, so the idea is that, for instance, if you, if you, uh, I assume living in California, a consumer in California could, uh, go online. Mm -hmm. um, browse through different digital designs because they're rendered so nicely. So you can almost you can basically see see the apparel in three D spinning online. Right. Yeah. You place the order. Once the order is placed, I mean you can fit it onto your body via your body scan. Like it's even it's even a better match, a better fit testing than than uh, than than uh, his than without without the 3d so once you place the order makes the payment then manufacturing goes to make that product and then drop shipping it directly to your house uh, i think that is a is a digital workflow connected with uh, e-commerce and then connected with an on-demand supply chain that's kind of a it's kind of a digital supply chain uh, we, frontier cannot achieve all this by ourselves we're working with different partners to try to complete that chain and then last thing i want to add is that um, we're not really promoting everything digital. That, that's not what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're trying to have a, We're trying to find a solution that is a better integration of online and offline. We're not saying just get rid of all the physical material because at the end of the day, designers still want to design physical garments. Apparel companies, they're still selling physical good. So right. we're really just a tool to, to accelerate that process or optimize that process. I think that's, I think, uh, that, that's uh, something that I wanna, wanna stress. That's, that's probably Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, Wing. No problem. We have to create a vivid picture for us. It's not only online, it's also a physical store. Yes, definitely. So uh, Joshua, well, can you just imagine uh, what kind of service and you hope that the digital uh, platform can help you with your designing work and industry? Um, I would say access to what I couldn't have access to now. Um, as an individual or as a team of designers, I would wanna have access to some of the best printing and some of the um, really great factories that can manufacture um, you know, all the way from a sample to you know, 10,000 or 4,000 of those sell it online that would mean i would want a system that would make it simple for me to sell online and uh, for the customer to visualize that which was what wayne was talking about that's fantastic it's yeah there's a lot of pieces out there and they could be yeah. put together there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle you're right yeah <clears throat> they, they could be put together great. and it'd be pretty awesome great. i think yeah. you guys can put the pieces yeah. together and, and make this puzzle a beautiful picture sounds fun yeah, thank, thank you diana Thank, thank you, you. Wayne, and thank you, Joshua, and uh, please say hi to Monique for me. Thank you. Oh, well, yes, great.